Now, moving on to my next topic, after the NBA Finals, I need to address this. And it is Caitlin Clark. I have some very strong opinions surrounding this woman and the WNBA. Very strong opinions. Now, of course, the Caitlin Clark hate, I want to address that first. While it may be a little bit understandable because the media is favoring her, she complains, she trash talks, and her being made to seem more important than other players, which I disagree with, I also equally disagree with the hate. Now, I will say, I don't like everything that Caitlin Clark has done, right? I'm not calling her sinless. I'm not saying she's the peak basketball god. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. She has made mistakes. When uh, Kennedy Carter got in a little scuffle with her, she had elbowed her in the face before the scuffle. Nobody heard about that, right? You didn't think I did my research, but I did. You know why? Because I'm me. I did the research. Thanks to my dad and sister. They told me that. I looked it up. I was like, oh, oh you're right. You're right. So let's give that some attention. She also complains about the rest. She's talks a lot of trash, but I don't agree with the way WNBA players are treating her. Why do I not agree with that? Well, number one, Caitlyn cannot control who the media favors. Why are you blaming her for that? Blame the media. You don't hate Caitlyn Clark for what the media tries to make her. She did not do that. She didn't. I don't care what anybody has to say about that. You cannot tell me that that lady has done anything to control the media's narrative. That's what the media wants to do. You blame the media, not the player. Next thing, whether you like it or not, it is not her responsibility to shout out other players, politicians, people, or whatever. It's not her responsibility. What other people say, what other players do, that's the responsibility of the WNBA and the media to address things like that. They ain't the responsibility of her. Her job is to play basketball. That's her job. She said it simply. Uh... Number three would be WNBA players have not necessarily treated her uh, great at all, right? There's no veteran coming saying, hey, man, it's going to be all all right. I don't see that happening. I don't. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see it happening. I just don't. Also, she has a massive target on her back, and considering the amount of pressure she's facing every day, four and five, it must be frustrating. It's hard. She faces tremendous amounts of pressure. And if you don't want to hear from me, you can hear from Serena Williams. She said, in quotes, they only, they only hate you because they can't do what you do. That's the message she gave to, Clay, to Caitlin Clark. That's the message. I will read it again. They only hate you because they can't do what you do. That was the message. So if anybody wants to come out and whine and complain and do all of that, take it up with me, take it up with Serena Williams, take it up with anybody backing her up. But the hate is completely unwarranted. Now, going into the rookie hazing, I understand it's part of the sport. But Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark have been subject to a lot of hate. And it prompts questions. Number one, why aren't vets coming to defend these rookies? And number two, why are people trying to pit these two against each other? Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese have continuously, continuously congratulated each other on their games. Admired, publicly admired each other's games. I think it is terrible how the WNBA has treated both of these people. They bought, I mean, they bought more attention to the league than any other class, any other draft class in history. Any other two players, two rookies in history. You got to get better. If you're the WNBA, you have got to treat your stars better. If you are veterans of the WNBA and want to see the league grow, you have to treat these rookies better. You got to treat them better. You can't get great without producing great. You won't produce great if you treat your rookie stars like trash. It's just not going to happen. Now, as far as a business and analytical standpoint, because, you know, I love my numbers and I love my analytics. Despite the popularity increase, the WNBA is still set to lose about $50 million this season, which is bum terrible, by the way. It's bad. So, I decided to make a list for myself. What can the WNBA do to really start making money? At least at least making a small profit. You are not profiting $1. You're losing $50 million. You're losing a Pat Mahomes yearly salary in the WNBA per season. You're losing Patrick Mahomes every year. Literally, it would take Pat Mahomes' entire contract without taxes, without FICA, without Medicare, without any of that. 
it would take a Pat Mahomes contract to make up that $50 million. If you want to do the math that way. Either way, ways that the WNBA can really start making money. Number one, better sponsors that are specifically geared towards the ladies. Clothing, makeup, food, entertainment, music are all sponsors that would generate more money for the WNBA. And not all of them just appeal to ladies. A lot of them appeal to men as well. Number two, make the game more exciting. I'm sorry, guys. Some WNBA games, unless there's a big star, they are boring. People don't want to watch them. Right? Extend the season. Speed the pace of the game. Increase the quarter lengths so more points are scored. It looks are important. I mean, they are. When someone sees your MVP averaging 22 and 12, they're going to be like, no, okay, right? It doesn't matter what the numbers were. It doesn't matter where the league is. That's what people are going to look at. The NBA has given us an expectation on what a star basketball player's stat line and career looks like. The WNBA, the very least, in my opinion, the very least they can do is extend the quarters. Extend the quarters, make the numbers look better. That brings more appeal. That attracts more eyes. It attracts 22 points attracts a lot less eyes than 28 points. How do you fix that in WNBA? You extend the quarters. Give people more opportunity to score. Open the scoring up. Easy, plain and simple. It happened to Caitlin Clark in college. She's averaging 30. What was everyone talking about? Scoring record. 30 points per game. It's plain and simple. Number three, smaller stadiums. The league is still growing. If you ask me, you should not have a stadium that is bigger than seven to 11,000 seats. That's all the WNBA needs right now. The league is growing. You are not the NBA right now. You cannot go into State Farm Arena and fill it up unless you're in a very special circumstance, like, like the championship or something. Yeah, maybe a host city could be an idea, right? Number four, better marketing. It's self-explanatory. The WNBA has to find a better way to reach their crowd. They have to. They have to. And number five, which I think is very important, better treatment and more marketing of your stars. Why do I not see Asia Wilson? Why do I not see Brianna Stewart? Why do I not see Sabrina Nescu, Caitlin Clark, and Angel Reese everywhere? I should see them all over the place. I should see them on the billboard in New York. I should see them here in Atlanta. I should see them in a Skims outfit on Instagram, wherever, right? But I should see them, WNBA. I need to see your stars. I've got to see them. And you have to treat them better. You've got to. Now, where does the league go from here? Well, if you need to look at Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese the same way that the NBA looks at Magic and Bird, right? Neither one of them were, were geared to be a villain, right? They were just rivals. They were just, uh, I'll say that they were competitors because they ended up becoming best friends. They respected each other's game, always have, right? It's the same path. Yeah. Magic and Bird played in the college championship. You know who else did? Caitlin and Angel Reese. Go figure. They got drafted high. You know who else did that? Both Angel Reese, Kaylin Clark, same draft class, unlike Bird and Magic, but they're both drafted high. They're both highly touted prospects. Easy. It's a huge opportunity to take the lead to the next level. You just got to find a way to market, and you have to find a way to put your stars in winning situations. The NBA took it to the next level with Magic and Bird. The question is, can the WNBA do the same thing with their two stars and Angel Reese and Kaitlyn Clark? Now, my take... I think the WNBA is a great game. I think it's a, a good way of watching basketball. But the WNBA right now is a mid-level product. Mid-level. At best. Great game. Great stars. But it's a mid-level product. The WNBA is not used to being great. They're not used to being at the top right now. But it was the same with the NBA in the 80s. Same thing. They're not used to that level right now the league's going to grow you have to grow steadily you have to pump everything you can into your stars the WNBA is a great 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 idea it's a great game it has to become a better product